Hey, it's Steve. Well, I've converted these two boxcars and this SW1 locomotive to KD couplers from the standard Lionel lobster claw type couplers that are functional but really oversized for O scale. So in this video, we're gonna see how I did that and how everything operates with those KD couplers. Well, before we get started, you might have a couple questions like, why are you doing this, Steve? Well, that's a good question. The main reasons why I'm doing it are that the body-mounted KD couplers should provide a little bit extra reliability when you're pushing cars through S-curves or small radius turnouts. Also, they couple easier, so when you're pushing cars together, the couplers do engage at low speeds very easily. And obviously, they look a lot more realistic than these big claw couplers that come standard. Why do you care if it looks realistic when your track doesn't look realistic? Well, that's a good question too. I am doing three rail O scale track because I have a small space to build a layout and that does provide me with more opportunities for fitting the track work that I want to do in that small space. Also, there's just a lot more availability of rolling stock uh, locomotives and everything else with three rail O scale. So those are the main reasons why I'm doing that, but everything else I want to look as realistic as possible. Warning, using O-scale KD couplers may result in brain damage. You may begin to feel a sense of superiority regarding the scale appearance of your O-gauge equipment after using KD couplers. This will result in friends and fellow hobbyists repeatedly smacking you upside the head until any last vestiges of arrogance have been eradicated and replaced with feelings of humility and thankfulness for being able to participate in this great hobby. Also, leftover KD couplers should not be used as a breakfast cereal. So, all right, fine. How hard is it to do the conversions? Well, really, it's pretty easy. The locomotive, all I had to do was take out one screw, disconnect the wire from the uh, circuit board inside, which should require removing six screws to get the shell off. But other than that, it was very easy to do. The boxcars are more involved, primarily because I had to take off like seven screws off each truck to get everything apart and to get the old coupler off. So that was more involved. I had to cut a little bit of metal off the truck as well. So the new coupler would fit without any interference. But the one issue is that you need, I needed like three different sizes of screws to get everything attached properly. So pick up one of these boxes of machine screws that are like from a computer repair kit. You can get them on Amazon. This way you have all the screw lengths you need. It's gonna vary by each piece of rolling stock depending on you know, the thickness of the plastic and everything else. So that was the only thing there. You need different size screws depending on what you're converting. But anyway, let's see how I did it. Okay, so I worked on the boxcars first and each of the two MTH boxcars have four screws roughly in the corner that you have to remove so you can remove the shell of the boxcar. And you have to do that because the screws that hold on the trucks are screwed in from the inside of the boxcar. So once you get that shell off, you can take the screws off that hold on the trucks. And then you have the trucks free and you have the bottom of the boxcar ready to mount the couplers onto. So you get four pieces with these couplers. You have the two halves of the box for the coupler, the coupler itself, and then a spring, which you put inside the uh, back end of the coupler. So this is how it looks fully assembled. And then to assemble them, you take the coupler and put it on the inside of the bigger box part, and you put the spring and the back side there between the post and the back of the coupler. And that helps to center the coupler and also gives it a springy slack action as well. Then you just snap on the top cover and you're ready to mount the coupler. So these MTH box cars are already pre-drilled and tapped for the KD couplers. So you just line the coupler over the two holes and then put in two screws. I used M2 by 10 screws on these, I believe. So 10 millimeter M2 screws. I used eight, 10 and 12 millimeter M2 screws for all of the coupler installations here. So it does depend on each box car, depending on how thick the plastic is and everything else. So you want one that's long enough to really bite into the base of the box car, but it can't be too long. Otherwise it will hit the metal weight that's on the other side and you won't be able to fully screw it in and, and thus not fully secure the coupler. So you need one that's just long enough, but not too long. So I installed the four couplers and that was pretty straightforward. And you can kind of see here what that looked like with the coupler installed. So those were easy to do. The next step though, which was more complicated, was removing the old couplers from the trucks themselves. So first I loosened these two screws here and that allowed me to pop off the wheel sets, which you have to take off so you can access the screws you need to unscrew to remove the whole coupler assembly. So once you get the wheel sets off, there's four screws to remove. You can kind of see the bottom left one there. Uh, the other ones are kind of hidden, but there's basically, you have to go in from the sides, take those four screws out, 
And once you do that, you can remove that whole center cage assembly. Then there's one screw on the top of the coupler and two more screws on the bottom. And once you take those off, you're ready to remove the coupler. And then everything is for the most part ready to go, except that on one side, those metal nubs kind of interfere with the actual KD coupler themselves. So I had to go ahead and cut those two nubs off on each of those trucks. Initially, I tried to use my Dremel tool and that works fine, but then I thought, well, maybe just, I'll just try my nippers here and you can nip those off pretty easily. So the, the metal isn't too, uh, too thick. So you can kind of just nip them off with your cutters there. But once I nipped off those nubs, I put the wheel sets back on, tightened this, everything down in terms of the screws, and I was able to mount the truck back on the bottom of the boxcar. And just had to do that three more times, and everything was ready to go with the boxcars. So I went ahead before I put the shell on and just tested to make sure everything would fit on the 036 curves, and everything just barely fits with the 50-foot boxcar. You can see on the 036 curves with the closer spacing with the KD couplers, the corners of the box cars just about touch, like they barely don't touch. So really that's the very bare minimum with those uh, standard KD couplers. If you go to the longer shank ones, that will spread the cars out more and they would probably be fine, uh, even maybe on an 031 curve. But again, I plan to keep these medium size ones. I have the short, medium, and long shank couplers. These are the medium ones. And so, Again, 036 is probably the bare minimum you can do if you have those medium KD couplers. So I was ready to go ahead and add the couplers to the SW1 switcher. So apparently I never recorded my, my work on this, but it's a very straightforward process, dramatically easier in a sense than the box cars. Now there's six screws that hold the shell of the SW1 onto the, to the bottom, and you have to take those six screws off so you can get the shell off so you can remove the wires from the circuit board on the inside that control the coupler. Now you could just cut the wires, not even take the shell off and, and take off the one screw that holds on the coupler. But because I want to potentially reinstall these at some point in the future, I wanted to take the shell off, unplug the uh, wires from the circuit board, and then run them back th out through the hole and then take off the coupler that way. So it'll be easy for me to reinstall the coupler. Now I did have to trim off the size of the little plug a little bit so it would fit through the hole on the bottom of the locomotive. So other than that though, it's just a matter of unplugging the wires, pulling them out through the hole, removing one screw that holds on the coupler and everything was, was fine. And I was ready to install the KD couplers. Lionel does give you these adapters here and these fit on to the uh, base of the SW1. So you have the coupler box at the right height. So you have to screw those on first. There's two screws on each side you have to put on on that adapter. And then the installation is just the same as on the boxcar, but it's a little bit different in the sense that those adapters that Lionel gives you have two posts, one on each side, and those fit into the holes of the actual coupler box on the KD coupler. And then you have to use the middle holes on the KD coupler boxes to actually mount the coupler to the SW1. So uh, with that installation, I used a longer M2 screw because I had to go through that adapter as well. So I think that's where I use the 12 millimeter M2 screw to make that installation. So very straightforward installation, just screw on the adapter, screw on the coupler once you assemble it, and you're pretty much ready to go. Just do that on both sides and overall a more straightforward process in the boxcars just because you didn't have nearly as many screws to deal with and it was a more straightforward installation. So then I tested the SW1 with the boxcar and again it's the same deal with the 036 curves. The corner of the boxcar and the corner of the SW1 pretty much just about touch on those 036 curves. So again I'm going to look at trying to do an 045 curve with the switching layout I'm building. But anyway, everything does sort of work on the 036 curves. And so I'm going to go ahead now, assemble some of the track and try it out. So you can see here during testing, everything for the most part worked fine. I had no trouble pushing and pulling either the 40 or 50 foot box cars through the 036 curves or through the turnout. So uh, overall, I was pretty pleased. But obviously the main issue here is that the box cars come very close to touching on the corners going around those 036 curves. I've actually seen people use these on 027 curves with some minor modifications. So again, uh, it's possible to use them on any radius curves, uh, even though they're body mounted, if you get the proper length coupler and maybe make a few modifications to the mounting. But without any modifications, pretty much you're fine for 041 or larger curves if you have 50 foot or shorter pieces of rolling stock. The longer the rolling stock, the larger radius curve you're gonna to need to be able to use the KD couplers. So anyway, the conversion is pretty easy. Yeah, there's a lot of 
screws to remove and parts to remove and things to change out and all that. But, but honestly, in many ways, it's easier than doing this in N scale or HO scale just because everything's a lot bigger in terms of the parts, the springs are bigger. It's just really hard to do these sometimes in N scale because all the parts are so small. Uh, one thing, these uh, Katie couplers, again, do have these uh, trip pins that are used here. They're kind of like hoses, like brake hoses, but, but these are for using the magnets to uncouple the cars. So if you don't plan to use the magnets, you can go ahead and just cut these off uh, or bend them out of the way. One, the only thing to watch out for with those is to make sure they don't extend down and catch on the track, since you do have that middle rail with this three rail uh, setup here, you do have to make sure they're not like dragging on, on the track or something like that and causing a short you know, or whatever. So uh, that's something to watch out for, but overall not too bad of a conversion and uh, something you might want to consider if you do like operations in O scale. But anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye.